Section 8.4 deals with scale factors and areas of two-dimensional shapes. So now instead of just dealing with a length, a width, or a height, now we're dealing with an area of a 2D shape. So our goal for this section is to solve area problems that involve similar 2D shapes. So I'm going to give you the summary first, just so that we know how to approach the next questions. So the key idea for this chapter is that if two two-dimensional shapes are similar and their dimensions are related by a scale factor k, then the relationship between the area of the similar shape and the area of the original shape can be expressed as the area of the similar two-dimensional shape is equal to k squared, so our scale factor squared, times the area of the original shape. Things we need to know? If the area of a similar 2D shape and the area of the original shape are known, then the scale factor k can be determined using the formula k squared is equal to the area of the similar 2D shape over the area of the original shape. So let's look at an example of this. So Jasmine is making a kite from a 2 to 25 scale diagram. The area of the scale diagram is 20 centimeters squared. How much fabric will she need for her kite? So if we look at this as the actual kite being an enlargement of the scale diagram, then our scale factor is going to be greater than 1, so it's going to be 25 over 2, or 12.5. So then using our formula, the area of the kite will be equal to k squared times the area of the scale diagram. So the area of the kite will be equal to 12.5 squared times the area of our scale diagram is 20 centimeters squared, which works out to being 3,125 centimeters squared. So now let's look at the your turn. So if the scale diagram for the kite had been drawn using a scale ratio of 1 to 20, and the area of the scale diagram had been 30 centimeters squared, how much fabric would Jasmine have needed for her kite? So I want you to pause the video and see if you can do this question yourself. I needed to determine the amount of fabric that Jasmine would have needed for her kite. I started by writing the information I knew. One centimeter on the diagram represents 20 centimeters on the actual kite. Therefore, one centimeter squared on the diagram will represent 20 squared or 400 centimeters squared on the actual kite. I wrote equivalent ratios to compare the scale factor to the area of the diagram and the kite. 30 centimeters squared is the area on the diagram, and A represents the area of Example 2 is using reasoning about scale factor and area to determine dimensions. So Jim's laptop has a monitor with the dimensions 9 inches by 12 inches. The image on his lap laptop is projected onto the screen of a whiteboard. According to the documentation for the whiteboard, the screen's, the screen's area is 2,836.6875 inches squared. So A. The image on the whiteboard is similar to the image on the laptop. Determine the scale factor used to project the images on the laptop to the whiteboard. Okay, so we're starting off with the small screen of a laptop and we're going to a really big whiteboard. So that means that our scale factor is going to be greater than 1 because it's an enlargement. So now let's actually calculate it. So we know that the area of the monitor is equal to length times width. The area of our monitor is 9 inches by 12 inches which works out to be 108 inches squared. So let's let k represent our scale factor. Then the area of our whiteboard is equal to k squared times the area of our monitor. Because we're making it bigger, we know that k is going to be greater than 1. That's our prediction. <coughs> so then the area of the whiteboard is 2,836.6875 inches squared. We're given that is equal to k squared times the area of our monitor, which is 108 inches squared. If we divide by 108 on both sides, we get 2,836.6875 inches squared divided by 108 inches squared. Our units cancel, which makes sense because k, remember, is a ratio, not a rate. So it doesn't have any units. k squared works out to be 26.265. Then we need to take the principal square root of both sides and we get k 
to be 5.125, which is greater than 1, so our prediction was right. So now part B asks us to determine the dimensions of the whiteboard. So B, let x represent the length of the whiteboard. So let x represent this part of the whiteboard. Then we have that, oops, sorry, the length. Let x represent the length of the whiteboard. So then we have 12 inches times our scale factor k, which we found to be 5.125, works out to 61.5 inches wide. And then let y represent the width of our whiteboard. So y, let's let y be this side, or this side of our whiteboard. So then we have y is equal to 9 inches times our scale factor k, which works out to 46.125 inches. And those are the dimensions of our whiteboard.